Father God, we thank you. We thank you for being the wise one, the holy one, the just, the majestic one. Lord, we thank you for being honorable in all your ways. We thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for being our righteousness, our justification. We thank you for the impartation of your Holy Spirit that brings us into knowledge and wisdom and understanding. For your thoughts are truly higher than our thoughts and your ways are higher than our ways. So as the heavens is higher than the earth, so we acknowledge your supremacy. We acknowledge your majesty. We acknowledge your infinite. We acknowledge your eternal and your self-sufficiency, your eternity. of who you are. Father, we thank you for being pure and holy and righteous and honorable in all your ways. We praise your heavenly Father for being the Lord of Lord, the great I am, the self-sufficient one, the wonderful counselor, the advocate, the intercessor. We praise you for being the rock, the rod and the staff, the bright and morning star, the first and the last, the alpha and omega. Father, we praise you for being our provider, our protector. We praise your heavenly Father for beginning a good work and bringing it to completion that we will have your mind, that our heart will be united as one, as you are in the Father. As our desire to be in the Father through the Son and the Holy Spirit, abiding eternally. For all that you have done, God, we acknowledge your greatness. We acknowledge your oneness, God. We acknowledge your Lordship and your authority over all. God, we just worship you. We worship you in the beauty of holiness because of who you are, God. We thank you, Father. We see you as a holy and righteous God. We acknowledge you as wise, above all wisdom. Your divinity will never be dethroned. Your powers will never be negated. You are who you said you are and a reward of them that diligently seek you. So, Father, we praise you and we honor you in all the fullness of the eternity of who you are. We thank you for your omnipresence and glory, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There's something about seeking with a pure heart, the things of God. And when you seek God, you know the connection you have with a holy and righteous God. Aren't you glad that this relationship is one-on-one? -on -one? For God looks at every individually one on one. That's the beauty of the relationship that we have with God. I'm going to be giving you several passages that the Bible speaks about the temple, the church, the scholarly schools, and the house. I'm going to give you the views that God has about it, and then I'll give you the views of the people. We know from Isaiah 55, 8 through nine, that Isaiah proclaims what thus says the Lord, for his thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. We see from scripture that God saw the temple as being sacred and reverent. God considers the temple as a holy place where his presence resides. The temple is to be reverenced and treated with utmost respect. First Kings 9, 3 says, God says, I have hollowed this house, which thy has built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. God established his temple as a meeting place. A place to come to seek him. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. God established the temple as a gathering where he is the one edified. He is the one most holy and high. He is the one that has all the honor, the glory, the riches, the strength, the blessings. 
<laughs> he is the one. He also said that his house was established for the house of prayer. The temple is seen as a house of prayer for all nations. Isaiah 56, 7 says, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Jesus came into the temple and he cast out the money changers and told them, my house, my father's house should be a house of prayer and not a den of thieves. What are we looking at in the correlation of how God sees the temple and the church as sacred and reverence? He sees it as a house of prayer. He sees it as a place he has put his name with his authority, his presence, his power, his sources forever. His eyes and his heart shall be there perpetually. He sees it also as a place of sacrifice and worship. The temple is where sacrifices are made and worship is conducted. It symbolizes the covenant relationship between God and his people. Leviticus 1, 3 through 17 details the sacrifices and its significance. Off of your body is a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be ye renewed, transformed through your mind, that you may know what is good, perfect, and the acceptable will of God. That is what God established the temple and the church for, that his name would be edified, that his presence would be reverence and honor, that prayer Come boldly to my throne of grace that you can obtain mercy and grace. Lay all your cares upon me because I care for you. That you will be a sacrifice of worship unto him. But let's look at how the people view the temple and the church. It was a center of religious life. For the people, the temple is a center of their religious and communal life. It is where they go to worship, to offer sacrifices, and celebrate festivals. It was a symbol of national identity. The temple represents the national identity and unity of Israel. It is a source of pride and a symbol of God's favor. So we agree they went there to worship. We agree they went there to sacrifice. We agree they celebrated the festival. We agree they saw it as a national identity where they could receive God's favor. But the problem comes in when they begin to neglect and misuse the temple. The temple was no longer about God. The temple became about them. The temple was no longer about edifying and obeying the ways and thoughts of God. The temple was more about their gathering, their will over God. For the Bible says there were instances where the people neglected or misused the temple. For example, in Jeremiah 7, 4, the prophet admonishes the people, trust ye not in lying words. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. This highlights the tendency to place undue trust in the temple's physical presence rather than in genuine worship and obedience to God. The temple was no longer viewed as genuine worship. It was hypocrisy. The temple was no longer viewed as obedience to God. It was everybody doing what they thought was right in their own sight. And so the temple no longer had the significance of what God had designed it for, his sacredness, his reverence, the prayer life, and the place of worship and sacrifice. Mm, mm -hmm. It was just a physical presence. God was not the central place on their throne. And, 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 and this is what God was showing in the Bible, the difference between how he viewed and established his temple and how people began to view the temple, a national identity. It was a source of pride, uh -huh, uh -huh. a pride, uh, not the right pride. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They wanted God's favor, but they didn't want to obey God. They wanted God identification 
but they didn't want to obey God. They wanted gods. Acceptance, but they didn't want to obey God. They wanted God's recognition, but they didn't want to obey God. They wanted God's name, but they didn't want his character. It became a source of pride. And pride comes before a great fall. And so it was neglected and it was misused. It was no longer considered holy. It was no longer considered the most high place to reverence God. Although God is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent, he still had a place of the gathering so that the people could come together and not forsake and be in carriage and all seeking the will of God, seeking the presence of God, seeking the holiness of God and offering up their body individually as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Let's look at the scholarly schools. You see, wisdom and understanding were God's value. As seen in Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom when with all thy getting, get understanding. True knowledge and wisdom comes from God's Proverbs 2 through 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Accountability, teachers and scholars are held to a higher standard of accountability. For much is given, much is required. James 3 once warns, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Well, God acknowledged scholarly schools. They were for those to receive wisdom and understanding. For he said, in all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom with all thy getting, get understanding. But the problem is with these scholarly shoes, you are to seek the wisdom from God, not the wisdom from humanity, the wisdom from God. Proverbs 2, 6 says, the Lord giveth wisdom and out of the mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So even in the scholarly schools, you are to seek God's wisdom. Even in the temple, you are to seek God's wisdom. Even in the house, you are to seek God's wisdom. Because God is omnipresent. He's omniscient and he's omnipotent. Let's look at how the people view the scholarly schools. We see the difference between God's view and the people's view. You see, people respected the scholars. Scholars and teachers are generally respected for their knowledge and understanding of scripture. But they had a divergence of views. Different schools often thought that existed led to debates and discussions on various theological and doctrinal matters. This is the evidence in New Testament with the Pharisees and Sadducees who had differing interpretations of the law. We know that to be true when God said, don't get into vain arguments. For he can uphold his word by his power. He has the final authority and wisdom and understanding of all. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our thoughts. He's the living God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it requires the impartation of his Holy Spirit to reveal to you and give you knowledge far beyond your own understanding. There was a potential for hypocrisy in these scholarly schools. Jesus frequently criticized the religious leaders of his day for their hypocrisy and legalism. And Matthew 23, 27, he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sceptres, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. You see, just as God's house, the temple, the church, the physical presence was to be a meeting place for genuine worship and obedience to God. 
a place where God would put his name at, a place where his eyes and his heart would be there perpetually. So was the scholars, schools, to have his mind, his heart, his eyes there perpetually, to have his name edified there perpetually, to have his genuine worship and obedience there perpetually. Now, let's go further. We've looked at the temple, the church, and the scholarly schools. Let's take a look at the house of God, the house, our house, where we reside. The blessing and provision, God desires to bless the homes of his people. The same as the temple, the church, is to be filled with God's blessings because he is Lord. The Sabbath was made for men and not men for the Sabbath. And we are to come there seeking him. Our house should have him as Lord. Proverbs 3, 3, 3 says, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the inhabitation of the just. Our house should be blessed because his presence should not only be in the temple, the church, and in the scholarly schools, his, our, his presence should also be in our homes where we reside. You see, the place of peace and rest. Our house should be a place of peace and rest, reflecting God's presence and blessings. According to Psalms 127, 1, except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. They build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh, waketh, but in vain. God is supposed to build his house, the church, the scholarly schools, and your house. In other words, God is the architecture of it all. Generosity and hospitality. Believers are encouraged to practice generosity and hospitality in their homes. Hebrews 13, 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. For those who want to gossip about what people are doing in the privacy of their own home, be cautious. Because the Bible says our home is supposed to be used for generosity and hospitality. Now, let's see how the people view their homes. They view their home as a home of refuge. People often view their home as a place of refuge and safety, a personal sanctuary from the outside world. They view their home as status and symbol, sometimes quite often higher than the church because that was their priority, their homes. It meant more than them than God itself. Some didn't even honor God in their homes. Some didn't even worship God in their homes. Some didn't even acknowledge that God was Lord in their homes. They had no hospitality and they certainly had no generosity. They had no responsibility and stewardship, meaning their homes were just homes of prideful, boasting, and arrogancy of attainment of what they thought was wealth. But maintaining a home involves responsibility and stewardship. Proverbs 24, 3 through 4, just like maintaining a church revives responsibility and stewardship, just like maintaining a school revives responsibility and stewardship, a scholarly school. And through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all the precious and pleasant riches. But my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. He supplies the needs for the house of God, the temple. He supplies the needs for the scholarly schools. He supplies the needs for the homes that honor God and all that have him as Lord and Savior. You see, while there are different reviews, 
that reflect the multifaceted relationship between God and his people concerning the temple, the scholarly schools, and the houses. God divine intentions is that he's Lord over all. Remember, his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. In other words, he's omnipresent. He's in the temple and the churches. He's in the scholarly schools and he's in the homes. If you're seeking him and desiring him to be. And we are not to place one over the other. That's reserved for God. He is omnipresent. His presence is not just at the church. His presence is not just at the scholarly schools for the scholars who study to be at the church or taught those to be at the temple. His presence is through every building that can be built by human hands that names the name of the Lord that should be receiving wisdom and understanding from God. That out of their mouth should come knowledge and understanding. That he is the great I am. And that he is omnipresent. You see, what God is resonating is that sacredness and reverence for him should be omnipresent. If you're in the temple or the church, that should be sacredness and reverence to him. If you're in the scholarly schools, that should be sacredness and reverence to him. If you're in your home, that should be sacredness and reverence to him. He's omnipresent. And everywhere that God is, it should be holy unto him. That's what true knowledge is about. True knowledge is the understanding and the acceptance through the revelation of a holy and righteous God that he is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. There are no limitations for God. There are no doors for God that a human can build and open and close. You're not God. And everybody will be accountable. For God is no respecters of person. You'll be accountable for how you reverence him in your home. You'll be accountable for how you reverence in your temples and churches. You'll be accountable for how you reverence him in your scholarly schools. For wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding of the most holy and righteous one. His presence is among all creation. And no one can control his presence. He takes care of everything that has his name upon it. He takes care of everything that's dedicated to him, that's sacred to him, that he owns. And his heart is there. Let's get ready to bring this to closure. 
So we cannot exalt ourselves in buildings built by humanity's hands. Because the presence of God is wiser. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the adversary for the days are evil. The wiser ones are the ones that take counsel from God and not worldly counsel. The wiser ones are the ones who fear and reverence God. The wiser ones are the ones who obey God, trust God, and lean not toward their own understanding because this God is incomprehensible. You can't figure him out. And you certainly can't tell him what's more important to him. He'll have to tell you. The wiser one know how to humble themselves and seek him. And then operate in faith towards obedience. The wiser one will honor him all the days of their life. Whose wisdom are you seeking? For some seek humanity's wisdom and some seek God's wisdom. Whose wisdom are you seeking? For much is giving much is respected. God judges based on knowledge. He knows everything everybody knows and everything everybody's in and everything everybody's doing. For when we meet him one-on-one, -on -one, there will not just be the book of the lamb. There will also be the book of your words. And it will just show everything you've ever done your works, your actions. For there will be no misunderstanding of God's final judgment. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Many masters, knowing that they shall receive the greater condemnation. Much is given, much is respected from God. You see, God gives wisdom and understanding when you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. That throne is made available for all to know truth. That throne, anything you ask in my name, if you ask in my name, you ask according to my will. I hear you. And if I hear you, you have the petition of your heart because your heart is in line with me. You shall receive. If you're seeking truth from God, you shall receive truth from God. Don't neglect and misuse any opportunity that God has made available for you, for his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Don't neglect and misuse your opportunity. Be sincere without hypocrisy. Know the God that you say you serve. Obey the God that you say you serve. Reverence the God that you say you serve. Be sacred unto the Lord that you say you serve. This is more than just your symbol, your affiliation, your pridefulness. This is about humility before a holy and righteous God, no matter where you're at.
even in your very own home, if it belongs to God. He sees everything, knows everything, and shall judge everything. He is hollowed and is built. He's built with his spirit that he placed within so that you will live your life honorable and well-pleasing in his sight. Our house is not built by humanity's hand that honors the Lord. Our house built by the characteristic of God honors the Lord. And then, and only then, is his name placed there forever. His eyes and his heart perpetually. Aren't you glad that God's ways are not our ways, that his thoughts are not our thoughts, that the heavens are higher than the earth? And so is his thoughts and his ways towards humanity. Aren't you glad that he is so wise that he has imparted his spirit to those who want to receive, to know truth, the spirit of truth? Aren't you glad he's made a throne available for you to come to? That he can provide his mercy and grace and extend his loving kindness to you and assist you. Aren't you glad that he can supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory? Aren't you glad that no one can compare to him? That he is the rod, the fortress, the hiding place, the staff. The holy and righteous one, the great intercessor, the advocate. Aren't you glad that he's eternal and mortal, invisible, that he's the only wise God? Aren't you glad that wisdom started with him and shall always rule and reign with them? Aren't you glad that he gives understanding far beyond our cognitive abilities? Aren't you glad that he gives spiritual understanding that the natural mind will never be able to receive nor understand? Aren't you glad that this God is not dependent on humanity, that God is self sufficient pre-existent. He doesn't need humanity. Aren't you glad that when God speaks, he means what he says and he keeps his word? Aren't you glad that he's the only one that can determine your future? Aren't you glad that he's the only one that really knows your future? Aren't you glad that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? He's consistent. He's dependable. He's faithful, trustworthy, pure, and holy, and righteous, and justice. Aren't you glad that he shall reign eternally? Aren't you glad that in him there is no deceit? There is no guile. There is no hypocrisy. Aren't you glad that God says, no, no one by the flesh, but know them by the spirit. Aren't you glad that all things in Christ is a higher standard that he will draw you into as you humble yourself in the presence of a holy and righteous God? Aren't you glad that you'll be judged individually for your actions and not everybody else's action? Aren't you glad that this God looks at you on one-on-one -on -one? And you can petition him one-on-one -on -one, and he knows everything one-on-one -on -one, and he never misses anything. He is everything, sees everything, knows your thoughts before you form your thoughts, knows your ways before you take your actions. Aren't you glad that this is a God that can feed you with the integrity of his heart and lead you skillfully with his hands? Aren't you glad 
that the world cannot consume and control this holy and righteous God. Aren't you glad that you'll never know anything about God except you seek him and he imparts it into you? Aren't you glad that he's not a respecter of persons? Mm, that if you want him, you can have him. If you want wisdom, he'll give you his godly wisdom. If you want godly counseling, he'll counsel you. If you need prayer, he'll intercede and pray with you. If you need anything, he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Aren't you glad that he's omnipresent? That if you can't meet him at the church house in the temple, you can meet him in your house. Aren't you glad? If you need something, you can't get to the scholarly schools. He'll feed you with the integrity of his heart. He'll reveal to you the hidden and secret things that you need to know for your purpose and will in your life. He'll reveal because you're seeking him. He'll reveal because you're trusting him. He'll reveal because he's the giver of all good things. He's the one that's more knowledgeable, the one that has all understanding. He was here in the beginning and he'll be here in the end. And he's the alpha and omega. Aren't you glad that he's the bright and morning star? Aren't you glad huh, that evil cannot Exalt itself above him. Aren't you glad that he can control all principalities and powers? Aren't you glad that your temple belongs to him? Aren't you glad that everything he places his name on <laughs> becomes holy? Because his presence is there and wickedness and evil cannot operate, cannot destroy, cannot prevail, except God allow it. Aren't you glad that he can even use wicked and evilness to discipline, to correct, to reveal his authority over all powers. Aren't you glad that he's not evil nor wicked and the righteous shall prevail? Aren't you glad mm. Mm. that he can take all things and work it out for his good? And because you love the Lord, because you honor the Lord, because you want the Lord's will over your life. It will work out for your good. Aren't you glad that anything you need, you can go to God and God himself? Aren't you glad that any concern you have, you can tell it to God and he knows it and will work it out on your behalf? Aren't you glad? He's strong and mighty and mighty in battle. Aren't you glad that he gave you the whole armor to put on to protect your mind, to protect your faith, to protect your strength so that you will know the truth? <clears throat> Aren't you glad that he gives the impartation of the Holy Spirit? Hi. <clears throat> Mm, 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 mm. that interacts with your temple. Mm, 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 mm. And all you're getting, get understanding. And all you're getting, get from the Lord. And all you're getting, seek the Lord first and foremost. And all you're getting, get wisdom. And all you're getting, know the truth. And all you're getting, know you're going to be held accountable. For everyone will be held accountable. Not just a few, but everyone. Everyone shall be judged at the final judgment. For he's the first and the last. There'll be no other say so after him. 
He has the authority and the power. Aren't you glad that when you honor God, he can provide and bless you in ways that no one can take or control? Aren't you glad that those who habitate in the Lord, in his justice, in his mercy, in his loving kindness and grace shall be blessed. Aren't you glad that he can make your house a place of rest and peace when you reflect on the presence of God? Except the Lord build the house. I don't care what house you're calling, except the Lord's presence orchestrates designs and building. The labor is in vain for everything that the Lord builds, he keeps. He's the watchman over all his building projects. He's the designer over all his building projects, even your vessel. Aren't you glad that there's no other name higher than his name? And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess when he returns. Aren't you glad? Ah, la, 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 la. Mm, mm, mm. That you don't have to be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request made known to God. Aren't you glad you can call him any time, any place, and anywhere. Aren't you glad? Mm -mm -mm. He's there before you call him, already working it out on your behalf. Aren't you glad mm -mm -mm -mm. that he is the only true Lord of creation? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Aren't you glad his ways are higher than the, our ways and his thoughts are higher then our thoughts. Aren't you glad he's God all by himself? And no one, not no one, can compare to his glory, his power, his majesty, his sovereignty, his holiness, his righteousness, his justification. Oh, aren't you glad? Mm, 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 mm. I don't know about you. But I'm so glad how God views the situation. I'm so glad how God determines his righteousness. I'm so glad of how God orchestrates all things according to his purpose and will. I'm so glad that I have a God that cannot become corrupted, evil, or deceived. I'm so glad that I have a God that can never lose his power, that truly has all knowledge and understanding. I'm so glad that this God changes not. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. So now we have it. How God views his temple, his church, his scholarly schools, and your house. Oh, now we have it, because if it's his house, you'll view your house like he views his standards. Anything that belongs to God has a higher standards. Anything that belongs to God will dwell in his righteousness. Anything that belongs to God will be sacred and reverence. Anything that belongs to God will be honorable genuine obedience to God. Aren't you glad that God sets the standards mm, 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 mm. and not the ways of this world? Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, Lord, for how you view it. Thank you, Lord, for how you uphold all things by the word of your power. There is no other power than the one that's holy and righteous. There is no other God than the one that's holy and righteous. For everything else shall bow. And he will have the last soul. 
say of the man. Mm, 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 mm. Whatever you sow, you shall reap. Be not weary doing well doing. For God is not a God that he shall be marked. Be not weary doing well doing. For if God said it, it shall come to pass. Be not weary doing well doing. For God is truly the author and finisher of your faith. Be not weary doing well doing. For some things can only come from the very hands of God. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, 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 mm. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm, 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 mm. You see, God knew the potential of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. He knew the potential of hypocrisy. That we all can become puffed up, prideful. Because God knows humanity. After all, he created humanity. He knows his creation. Everything about his creation. And everything has to be put in the Lord's hands. Because it's God's desire that everything that belongs to him, that has been dedicated to him, that it be hollowed by him, made sacred and holy unto his righteousness, that he build, that he gives you the design, the master plan, his will for your life and your habitation, so that his name is there forever. His eyes and his heart perpetually watching over you. Guiding you. Giving you wisdom to navigate. That you might know he is Lord. And he shall eternally reign. A covenant relationship between God and his people. That he should be the center of our life. It's not religious. It's a relationship. We cannot see him as religion. For there are many religions. <clears throat> But this is a relationship. This is a living God that operatively engages in the creation of his people. We're more than a symbol of a national identity. For this God is omnipresent. And if we're going to boast, it has to be in the Lord. For we have nothing to boast about. It's vain and folly. And it's his favor that we need. We need his face to shine upon us. And to give us his peace. His approval. His protection and provisions. Mm. And we cannot neglect and misuse our temple. And anything 
that he has placed his name on to dishonor him. Mm. 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 Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. For he is genuine. And he still requires obedience unto him. He's never changed his desire of obedience. It was required from the very beginning. And it will even be required to the moment you take your last breath. His mercies truly are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And this all comes from God. You see, scholars, they had all their different doctrinal and theological understanding. The Pharisees, believed in the resurrection and the Sadducees didn't. And they taught according to their theological understanding. But if they would have went after the one who could give them all the knowledge that they needed, they could have received the truth from the spirit of truth. Many masters, God says, many masters, many want to be rulers and masters and dictate lives and make what only God can make. And the Bible says, knowing that they shall be and receive greater condemnation. James 3, 1 says, wounds, my brethren, be not many masters. There's only one, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. For knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation, We are to honor God in everything we do. He told the scribes and the Pharisees, they were hypocrites, beautifully outward, but yet they had dead bones. They did not have the living spirit. They were prideful. And pride rejects God. You see, the adversary was prideful. So we know how God deals with pride. That's why humility is one of the greatest blessings before a holy and righteous God. Humble yourself in the presence of God. And he shall. Hmm. exalt you in due time. That's one of the greatest blessings is to humble yourself in the presence of God and let his will be magnified in your life. For no one can ever stop his will except the Lord builds the house. Everything that's done will be found in judgment in vain. For God will determine all things. In fact, the Bible says this is a vain thing 
to try to make plans when you don't even know tomorrow's going to come. You should be asking the Lord if it be his will. As a reminder of the frailty that you are. The mortality that you are. He's immortal. The only one. You even need him. From the very beginning to the very end. He's needed. And even in between, he's needed. There are some things you can go without. But once you've established a relationship, a true relationship with, you'll know you can never go without. Not a day you don't cease to think about. Not a day. You don't go to the altar to commune with. Not a day you don't thank him for your uprising and your downsetting. And the very life that he is graciously giving you. And the wisdom that he imparts that you can't get from humanity. And all you'll get, get wisdom, get understanding. For pride is the road of destruction. And zeal with no knowledge is pride. Be not wise in your own eyes. Seek the Lord's wisdom. One who is faithful and able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think of according to the power that worketh within these earthly vessels because it's his power, his excellency. Now we have a brief view of how God viewed the temple the church, the scholarly schools, and the houses that many resided in. He's Lord over all, if he's Lord over your life. And when we have a clear understanding And an acceptance that he's Lord. Then you will receive. What God is doing. For he's Lord. Aren't you glad that he's Lord? Aren't you glad that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are definitely not our thoughts? They're so much higher. Even in his design, he never changed. It was all a shadow that was gradually being revealed. And many won't fully understand it until we see him face to face and it'll still be. A shout until he reveals it. How many of you really love the Lord? If you love me, keep my commandments. Love me with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Live and have your very being in me. Live and move and have your being. 
His presence is everywhere. His presence is everywhere. Oh, how much better the entire world would be if we would acknowledge his holiness and that his presence is everywhere. And if we truly feared and reverenced the Lord, much that goes on would not be a carry. But the Bible says, perilous times shall come. There's his wisdom being exalted even then. But he also said, those that trust him, shall know him. And it does make a difference when you trust in him. You're not worried about trusting in humanity because to trust God is to know. His eyes run to and through the whole creation to show himself mighty on behalf of his people. His heart is continuously seeking and drawing. Mm. To reveal the excellency of who he is. Oh, if we just fully trust him. Just trust him. How much more of a life we could enjoy while we're here if we would just trust him. He gives you a sense of joy, a sense of knowledge and understanding, a sense of patience and long suffering. He lets you know his faithfulness. He's pure and holy and true and honorable. And he has a good report. He can change anything. For his good. There's nothing he cannot do. And he gives you a sense of all just because of who he is. You don't have to worry. He just lets you know he's the comforter. The father of mercies and the God of all comforts. Mm, 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 mm that will always be available. The spirit of truth. To know his presence is omniscient. Is to know he's God. Fully self-sufficient, pre-existent, wise, immortal, invisible, yet actively involved in the providential care of his creation. How can you doubt a God like that? Mm, 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 mm. And what I love about him the most he knows truth. He knows everything. 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 He knows. And that is so comforting because he's a righteous God. Yes, let us get ready to pray. 
I am so glad that God does what he does. Remember how he views things differently than humanity. We get self-consumed. But if you go to God, he'll give you truth and put it in his perspective. So it's no longer a concern. You see, humanity will never be God. We can't even obtain all of his communal attributes fully. We couldn't. We're human. There's so much more to God that we have yet to tap into. Because we don't truly see him and understand him to be higher than this world. We say it, but it really has not permeated in our lives. Anything that's greater and higher than this world should make you tremble at the very knowledge of that. What he creates, he can rightfully destroy. What he creates, he can rightfully uphold. What he creates, he can rightfully orchestrate. And that should give you a praise to the most high God. Mm. We seek him for his wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Anything you ask in my name, you know I hear you. And if I hear you, you have the petitions. What are you petitioning him for? Because if it's according to his will, it is that you will receive wisdom knowledge and understanding, the more principal thing, what is necessity for life. He truly has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness and has made it available that we each individually can know him. For the veil had been torn down. And we can enter into his holy of holies if we let him draw. And as he draws, he takes away the impurities. And works on it these earthly vessels towards perfection. Mm, thank you, Lord. What a comforting message. There's no wisdom higher than he is. And if you humble yourself in the presence of a great and mighty God, he can reveal things to you in ways that you never imagined. His will and purpose for your life is defined by him. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we honor you, we love you, we worship you. We thank you for your patience. For you have truly been patient with your creation. We thank you for your word of wisdom. It never fails. Your knowledge is awesome.
You truly know all things, the future. We thank you for your majesty, your sovereignty, your holiness, your mercy, love, and grace. We thank you for the power to keep. Because only you can keep. Let your face continue to shine as we desire to be drawn into the holy of holies, seeking your face, seeking your will and purpose, that we might be found pleasing and acceptable in your ways. For you are truly the one who has the final say so. And so we honor and reverence you. And everything that we have is dedicated to you. Everything belongs to you, God. Everything belongs to you. Let everything be used for your glory. Let everything be done for your glory. Let your purpose rule and reign. For you are truly Lord of creation. The sovereign one. The most wise. Father, continue to design the master build. Let not the works be done in vain. Orchestrate and set according to your purpose. Reveal according to your divine time. Execute your righteousness that all might know you are still the God of creation. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. I thank you for how you designed and kept me until the moment you were ready to release and reveal. I thank you, Father, in advance for what has yet to come. I thank you for being Lord over my life. Lord over everything you've ever gave me. That it all belonged to you. I thank you for my mind, God. That you had. I thank you for my heart, God. That you had. I thank you for my temple, God. That you had that you may continuously be glorified and that your will will be magnified that only you can do. Thank you, Father, that my life belongs to you, that you've already had a plan. You just have to reveal it. May I remain obedient and follow your plan, your will, and your purpose. May I operate in ways that please you as you continue to be Lord over my life. May you be well pleased. I be found to the praise of your glory because I trusted you above all. May you resonate your excellency, your knowledge and wisdom that is above all. And may I be attentive to the movement of your Holy Spirit to obey distinctly every movement, every strategic command and operate in the excellency of your power. Ah, 
trampling over the adversary works, shining light and bringing forth the truth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 There will come a time when people will reject the truth and desire hypocrisy. The spirit of truth rules and resides in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.